This is Sergey Young. I'm founder of Longevity Vision Fund. I'm very excited to announce the launch of an amazing book called Death of Death, uh, co-written, co-authored by uh, two men of many talents, two very good friends, Jose Cardera and David Wood. Jose, David, uh, if you can briefly introduce yourself. Yes. Thank you so much, Sergey. I am Jose Cordeiro. I am an engineer from MIT, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, dedicated now to longevity and anti-aging. And with my dear co-author from Britain, David Good, we published our best-selling book first in, uh, in Spanish, La Muerte de la Muerte. Uh, there are two editions now. This is second edition, a success in Spain and all over Latin America. And then in Portuguese, a morche da morche. And now it is coming out in French, la mort de la mort. And soon it's coming in a Russian, also with the epilogue by Sergey Young. And then in also in Chinese, and we are working in other international editions. So this is me connecting from Madrid, Spain, and let's go into London, England. Welcome, it's my pleasure to be here. My name is David Wood, and my background's 25 years in mobile computing and the smartphone industry. I nowadays chair London Futurists, where for 13 years I've been hosting events on all aspects of the techno-progressive future. Thanks, Jose. Thanks, David. Uh, before we go into discussion, I just wanted to say the book is going to be available from today in at least four countries. So it's the wonderful countries of uh, France, uh, Belgium, Switzerland, and Luxembourg. So you're very welcome to order this and enjoy it. So let's go to the content. Let's go to questions. My first question uh, to actually to both of you, what is the time frame that we should consider to stop or even reverse aging? Uh, let me give a first quick answer. And um, with my friend uh, Ray Kurzweil, who is also an engineer from my alma mater, MIT, and also he was founder of Singularity University. He basically talks about two dates, and I totally agree with those two dates, personally. The dates are 2029 and 2045. He estimates that by 2029, 2030, that is, by the end of this decade, we will reach longevity escape velocity or the Methuselarity, the singularity of Methuselah, which means that for every year we survive, we gain an extra year, but still aging. So we will live longer, but still aging until 2045, when Ray Kurzweil expects that we will be able to have very, very cheap, basically free technologies for rejuvenation. As a philosopher of science who has studied a lot about uh, forecasts, it's my view that the prediction Jose has uh, shared is entirely possible. Indeed, we could be living agelessly by the 2040s. It will come down, in fact, to how much we decide as a human species to prioritize this task. Do we really decide that this is a useful thing? Do we understand the economic benefits, which will be tremendous? Do we understand the humanitarian benefits, which will also be tremendous? Or will we collectively be distracted, which sadly we sometimes are? But if we really focus on this, we'll have more and more people each year working in this area and gradually developing ever more reliable uh, and lower cost therapies that will indeed reverse aging by the 2040s. Well, that's wonderful. Let's spread it precise. So that's great. I'm looking forward to the next decade or two for this um, massive changes. My second question is, um, uh, I think we know a lot about what is happening in the science and technology of, of age reversal and longevity in our small circle. But the question is why there's, there's so little knowledge, general knowledge about you know, this exciting breakthroughs, this advancement in the general public. Uh, actually, I think that many people are mentally blocked uh, because no one likes to think about death, even less their own death. So we try to avoid, we try to escape. But I find this um, 
terrible, terrible, because in fact, we know since 1951, that is almost 70 years, basically, that cancer is biologically immortal. Doctors discovered 70 years ago that cancer discovered how not to age. So cancer cells are considered biologically immortal. Then we also know that germ cells are biologically immortal. And then we also discovered that there are some small animals like hydras and medusas that are also biologically immortal. So immortality already exists, but we don't want to think about it because until now, every single human has died. So death is in our minds and we want to keep it out. This is called terror management theory because this is terrifying. But David probably has a better explanation. Well, I think there are multiple aspects. There is this psychological aspect, which is uh, very significant, which means that sometimes we are not rational at thinking about the opportunities for extending significantly our lifespans. But there was also, frankly, some mistakes made by some uh, eminent uh, biologists who, for understandable reasons, concluded that aging was simply too complicated and there would be no way that a single genetic intervention or a single biological change could uh, extend lifespan by dramatic amounts. They were sure that evolution was smarter than anything that we humans might be able to do. There's even something called Orgel's second rule that says evolution is smarter than you and that uh, evolution will always design something better than human intelligent designers might try. And that dogma dominated much of the whole field for many decades until it was discovered almost by accident that single genetic changes in some organisms could extend their healthy life, doubling it, tripling it, quadrupling it. And in one case now, oh, it's a small animal, a small worm, but a single genetic change can extend its life tenfold. Now, we humans are more complicated, but we can already see also some single genetic changes do seem to extend human life as well. Not tenfold, but in some cases, possibly adding 10 years of healthy life on average. So now that dogma has been removed, and now more and more people are realizing this is a good field in which to study. There are real results. And yes, of course, uh, the human biology is incredibly complicated, but not so complicated when you see it from the right point of view, which is the viewpoint that aging is a set of damages to the biology, and each set of damage can be repaired in its own right. Oh, that's great. I, I just recall the outcome of the recent study. It has been done in, in US and UK. And people have been asked if they want to extend their life by, I think, 10, 20 uh, years. And the positive, uh, yeah, well, the yes, it was only in 35% of cases. So two thirds of the population, uh, uh, you know, not, it has this kind of old paradigm and disbeliefs about you know, age reversal and age extension. So your book, I think, is an opportunity to change this public perception. Speaking of that, do you think the COVID pandemic actually changed the level of, no, level of interest uh, and you know, integration knowledge-wise from the public to the issues of longevity, anti-aging, and healthcare overall? Let me also give you a first answer. And what we are seeing with COVID is incredible cooperation and competition internationally in terms of uh, medicine, biotechnology. And what has happened is truly amazing. In two weeks, the COVID-19 virus was sequenced. In only two weeks, the previous SARS virus about 20 years ago was sequenced in two months. And 40 years ago, AIDS, HIV was sequenced in two years. And even before, it was impossible to sequence yeah, any absolutely. virus because we didn't even know the genome. So this is improving exponentially from two years to two months to two weeks. And I am pretty sure we will sequence uh, the next virus in a decade in two days. But also vaccine development, thanks to new technologies like messenger RNA. It's a new technology that is being used now that helps to accelerate the process. That is why we could have a vaccine in only a few months. 
And actually, the vaccine was developed in only a few days after finding the sequence of the virus, but it took months to do the human uh, clinical trials. So anyway, uh, people are understanding that biotechnology is advancing exponentially, that we can cure diseases, and that the most important disease really is not COVID. It is aging, aging. So now we have to focus on the mother of all diseases, with, which is aging. And I think the pandemic is helping people to open up their minds to the possibilities of technology to live healthier, longer, better lives. Thank you. The other thing about COVID is that people are realizing that what makes people die with COVID typically is they are the victim of another disease, which is aging. There is this mortality curve in which people uh, become more likely to die. Every eight years we live, we become twice as likely to die from all causes. And it's the same with COVID. And then people also used to say, a small number used to say, it doesn't matter if COVID kills some old people because they were likely to die anyway. It's a bit heartless. Some people said that. Uh, most people who die of COVID, they're in their 80s. But then other people looked and said, well, most of these 80-year-olds could have lived at least another 10 years if they didn't have COVID. In fact, if they had lived another 10 years, they might have lived another 20 years because in 10 years' time, there may be more therapies. And so there is a change in public attitude that respects the right to live of older people as well as younger people. After all, the foundation of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights is everyone has the right to life. It doesn't stop if you are from a different race or from your different country, and it doesn't stop if you happen to reach 70 or 80. And there's been a big groundswell of public opinion that says, actually, life is important even for the elderly. And let's say, therefore, address the underlying cause, which isn't just COVID. It is the decay of the immune system. And it's the other problems of the bodies, which we recognize as being hallmarks of aging. Yeah, uh, I agree. And as I say, I think COVID has been a wake-up call, a call to action for you know, all of us to fight aging. So that's, that's why the book is, I think is extremely timely and, 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 you know, pretty much related to the events that we all experienced last year and we're likely to experience this year as well. Speaking of ethics and, and morality, um, uh, it, the question I, you know, I've always uh, ask is, um, is it really moral and ethical to stop aging and cure death? What well, I could ask, is it ethical or moral to cure cancer? Is it ethical to cure Alzheimer's? Is it moral to cure Parkinson's? Is it ethical um, to cure any disease? Well, obviously it is. And aging is the mother of all diseases. So actually, if we stop aging, if we reverse aging, we will basically stop uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, cancer, uh, heart trouble, etc. So of course it is ethical and very moral. Actually, I would say it is the most ethical thing that one can do. And as David was explaining before, when we talk about human rights, the number one human right is the right to life. So it is very ethical, it is very moral, it is the ver very first human right. See, some people say that they, some of these therapies might only be available at first for wealthy people. Therefore, they'll be unethical. But that's the same with many treatments for cancer. Cancer immunotherapy is wonderful, but it's a very expensive treatment. We don't uh, say, well, we're not going to apply it at all. What we do is with uh, such a treatment is we find ways to make it uh, available at lower cost. It's the same with heart bypass treatments. They're incredibly expensive, hundreds of thousands of dollars in some case. But again, we believe it's worth exploring how we can uh, intervene more readily. At the back of people's minds when they raise these questions, they somehow have an idea. It's more moral to accept, you know, to reconcile ourselves to death. And this is somehow a more mature way of living. Well, I have to say the famous prayer from Reinhold Niebuhr does say, God give us the grace to accept what we cannot change. But it goes on to say, give us the courage to change what can be changed and the wisdom to know the difference. And for most of history, there wasn't that much we could do about extending human lives significantly. But now, 
let's have the wisdom to know the difference there are things we can do and we should no longer accept all the suffering and tragedy that accompanies aging and death the loss of ability the loss of experiences the curtailing of uh, potential and the curtailing of the uh, possibilities the moral thing to do is to accelerate this treatment oh this is great um well, my other question is, um, in addition to morality and ethical side of it, is it really possible to stop or reverse aging? Uh, well, was, uh, as I was explaining before, it is not only possible, it already exists. We, have, uh, we know we have immortal cells, even in our own bodies. Germ cells in our bodies do not age but we are basically somatic cells. We are 99% somatic cells and somatic cells age. So when we die because of the somatic cells, then the germ cells in our body also die. But again, uh, also cancer. Cancer to me is fascinating because cancer discovered how not to age and cancer didn't go to Harvard or to Cambridge. Uh, Harvard, uh, I didn't go to any university, okay? And cancer discovered how not to age. So scientists will discover also how not to age. So it is possible and it already exists. And um, also one more thing, in 2006, the Japanese scientist Shinya Yamanaka, who got the Nobel Prize in 2012 for discovering that there were four genes uh, that uh, control the aging of skin cells in mice then this has been generalized to other type of cells and to other organisms. And we know it is only very few genes that control the aging process. This is called epigenetic. And um, his process is today referred as cellular reprogramming. So we can reprogram the age of the cell both ways, actually. We can make younger cells older and older cells younger. Nobel Prize in Medicine 2012 to Shinya Yamanaka that I had the pleasure to visit at the University of Kyoto. And many scientists are working on that. And last year in 2020, David Sinclair and some of his friends at Harvard University basically rejuvenated the eyes of mice. Mice that were old and blind uh, through cellular reprogramming recovered vision and this is incredible this has been done at the cell level and now at the organ level and i hope soon at the whole organism level the other proof of existence we can point to is that some animal species and uh, some trees and some birds are uh, as far as we can tell free from aging of course they get older from a, a calendar point of view but even though they're later in their lives they are no more likely to die so unlike humans unlike most of our pets and our farm animals the animals we are most familiar with who do age there are a number of species, including uh, tortoises, the, I mean, the great tortoises that Darwin studied. They tend to have the same possibility of death. It's about 1% or 2% possibility of death every year, but it doesn't increase as they get older. There are some trees, the bristlecone pines, that are, in some cases, 4,000 years old. If you do a biological analysis of these bristle, bristlecone pine trees at different age you won't find anything in the biology that indicates which ones are older and which ones are younger they have the maintenance mechanisms working well we can look at some remarkable example from various species of sharks and uh, whales and we can look at some uh, mammals as well the so-called naked mole rat which again shows no sign of aging. Of course these creatures do die. They die when they fight, and they die from infections occasionally, but they don't become more likely to die as they get older. Now we are studying, we, the scientific community, is looking at what are these mechanisms and indeed uh, we are learning how to apply some of them more widely, like the genetic reprogramming of the Yamanaka factors that Hosey just mentioned. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, well, let's go to you know countrywide aspect of that. In which countries do you both think uh, the biggest progress will be made in the next, say, three to five years? 
Well, I think there are many countries competing and even cities within countries. In the USA, I actually had the pleasure to live both in Boston in the East Coast and in Silicon Valley in the West Coast. And in both of those environments, they are doing incredible research. Also in Southern California, in uh, LA and in San Diego, and in many other places are around the USA. Similarly, in Europe, in Germany, in Germany, there is a lot of incredible research on anti-aging in Britain, here in Spain, actually one of the top scientists on uh, telomeres and telomerans uh, is the director of the Cancer Research Center in Madrid, Maria Blasco, and um, many other scientists, and also East Asia. I am very excited about uh, Japan, Korea, and China, because their populations are also aging so fast, so fast that they need to stop aging because otherwise China is expected to lose 700 million people by the end of the 21st century if they don't do anything. And that is why our book will be published by a publishing house or the government of China, because they are terrified about losing 700 million people. So all across the planet, from China to Silicon Valley, there is incredible research. The good thing about today's world is that ideas can spread quickly around the world. Where so when one country is uh, seen to have some success, other countries are quick to copy. And we can look at America. It has the National Institute for Aging, which is uh, very good that it has been set up. It is about to embark on a large trial of a particular anti-aging treatment, which is the diabetic drug, uh, metformin, which is, uh, has been observed to significantly extend uh, people's uh, healthy life. It needs more evidence, and that trial is being carried out in America. There are some smaller countries. I have been impressed a couple of times when talking to civil servants from uh, Singapore. They have come to ask me what advice would I give, and it turns out they often seem to know even more than I do about this field. So I'm very impressed at uh, how keen they are to take charge of how things are developing. Uh, there are some things in the United Kingdom as well. We have an all-party parliamentary group for longevity, which has set a relatively modest goal, but it's useful nevertheless that by 2035, healthy long life's health span will be increased on average by five years. I'm campaigning to make them change the goal from five years to 15 years at least, but it's, it's a start. And finally, there are lots of people throughout the French-speaking world who are doing fascinating research. And you can find out about some of them from, uh, for example, the HEALS uh, group, uh, Healthy Life Extension, H-E-A-L-E-S, which are doing some conferences coming up soon, bringing together speakers from around the world, but also some of the remarkable work being done in France. And here it's in the book, La Mort de la Mort. <laughs> yeah, by the way, about the book, can you explain me the image on the book cover? What does it mean? Um, well, actually, it is different in different editions. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I guess this is probably uh, from Shakespeare, to be or not to be. Mm -hmm. And also how technology is helping us uh, to overcome death, uh, which I think is the ultimate enemy. And even in the Bible says, the last enemy that will be conquered is death. So David, your take on the beautiful cover? Well, I have to say, when I posted this uh, book onto my Facebook a couple of days ago, there were a lot of very positive comments about this cover. It does invoke some philosophical questions as well. Um, to be or not to be? Do we really want to seize the opportunity? Or are we going to be despondent? Are we going to be defeatist? Now is the time to really wake up and realize this is not the same world as before. This is a world with lots of new possibilities, rejuvenation of mind, rejuvenation of heart, rejuvenation of our politics, but vitally also rejuvenation of the body and the brain. Uh, that's great. So final question for today. Do you want to be immortal? I, I think I know the answer about, you know, of Jose, but um, if you can share it with, uh, the, with the audience. Uh, well, probably the right word is a mortal, 
meaning that we don't have to die because immortality can never never be guaranteed there will always be accidents yeah. uh, homicides and suicides but i think i want to live indefinitely especially indefinitely young because if you are full of energy full of life at a young age you will want to live longer and longer do more things read more books in different languages you know you can read our book in russian very soon in chinese <laughs> uh, i want to go to mars i want to go to other planets i think beautiful life is fantastic so i want more and better life for everybody also and we live in truly incredible times what i like to say we are between the last human mortal generation and the first immortal generation and my question to you is where do you want to be Great. we're about offering days. choice I and mean, that's what i think this uh, remarkable technologies will allow people they'll be able to decide by themselves what uh, kinds of life to live and it won't just be dictated by an uh, inevitability of biology anymore most people who say they don't want to live long it's because they think well they have to reconcile to it well that reconciliation is no longer needed how long will each person choose to live we can't say for sure but there is an awful lot of things worth exploring huge amounts of music huge amounts of literature one day we might watch all of Netflix and get to the very end of it, perhaps. But by that time, there'll be much more created. And this may sound flippant. It's a sort of uh, just entertainment. Well, we humans uh, can get a great uh, joy from creativity, a great joy from our social relationships. And no longer will that need to be truncated and cut short. And each person can decide for themselves. And in case it's we do become bored, we'll have the option to shut ourselves down temporarily, perhaps with chronic suspension, and then come back to yet another new experience of life. So all of this is covered uh, in great depth, the, the engineering, the medicine, but also the moral and ethical questions are in this book. I look forward to hearing from people who read it and answering questions. Beautiful ending. Thank you very much. And we're very excited. And you know, good luck. Uh, to readers, uh, you'll really enjoy it. Again, it is available from today to all bookshops on all internet platforms in these four beautiful countries. Enjoy, stay healthy, happy, and live forever if you want. Live long and prosper, my friends. Live long and prosper. Thank you.